Hello, everyone. Today we'll talk about Acts chapter 17 from verse 10. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed also of honorable women, women which were Greeks, and of men not a few. But when the Jews of the Thessalonica acknowledged that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go, to, go, to, go as it were, to the sea, but Silas and Timothy abode uh, there still. As Paul began to witness powerfully, whatever he went, you know, there, are, there were synagogues where the Jews got together. He went there to preach the word. Especially on the Sabbath day, the Jews, they got together in the synagogue, they shared the word, and they preached. So he, went, he stayed there in the, in the synagogue. So Paul went to the synagogue where the Jews were gathered, and he talked about the Old Testament. And he talked about the Messiah, the, te- the prophecy, prophecy. And he talked about Messiah who died, and he said that Jesus is the Messiah. So that's how he preached the gospel. And that was really effective. So when we see the mission journey of Paul, so whatever he went, he went to the uh, synagogue of the Jews, because in the synagogue, the Jews, they came together to share the word. So he talked about the Bible, and then he talked about the uh, prophecies in the Bible. So he talked about how Jesus were to come and die for their sins, so that Jesus was Christ, and people who began to believe in Jesus rose. But what is interesting, whatever he went, went to the synagogue of the Jews, and he talked about the Old Testament, and talked about how, talked about Jesus, then most people, they would, most people they'll believe Jesus when they hear that but on contrary there are people who are against it and they will also persecute so where the Jews are gathered he would go stay there and go to other cities and preach the gospel again so not only Jews but also Greeks there are many Greeks there who believed So this mission journey of Paul was very precious and amazing. So when they went to the synagogue of Greeks, synagogue of Jews, he would talk about the Jews and Jesus were to come as Messiah. And what he talked about next was that he introduced Jesus and talked about how Jesus were to come. So poor Paul, whatever he went, he preached the gospel, and people got people got saved in the synagogue. And as soon as he preached the gospel, there were some, some people who were against us who were against. So sometimes they, they would get kicked out. But whatever they went, there were people who believed in Jesus, and this worked really well. In order to preach this gospel, God chose many precious servants like Paul and Silas, but there were only Paul and Silas. You know, to let them preach the gospel to in more cities, God, God will not let them stay in one city, so He would bother them and persecute them by other Jews so that they would get spread out. So when Philip preached the gospel in Samaria, there was great work in Samaria. And what happened next? The Holy Spirit did not, did not let him stay in uh, Samaria, but brought, brought him to Casa from uh, Jerusalem. And there, that's where he met Ethiopian eunuch. So from, 
from there to Ethiop- uh, the Kassa is very far away, maybe one month by chariot. It was a long way. So because in the Bible, the rul- rulers of the God, rulers and law, 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 lawyers, they thought they were the true leader. So being guided by the Holy Spirit, they came close to the to they came close to the chariot, and the chariots they're usually and they could not they they are usually faster than people running. So they saw the Ethiopian eunuch pushing the word there, uh, reading the Bible. So he read he asked him, "Do you, do you understand what you read?" Actually, he could not understand what he was reading. He was about Jesus, Isaiah 50, chapter 53. He was bruised for transgressions. He was wounded for iniquities. And of his, chast- his chast- chastisement of our peace was upon him. And he read that passage, but he could not understand it. So he asked Philip. He let him get on his chariot and he asked him, Who is this man that the pro- prophet talking about? Is it himself or someone else? So it was so good for Philip to preach the gospel. Oh, do you happen to see the news? Because back then they didn't have any news. Did you hear about Jesus of being, cru- being crucified on, the, on Gal- Galilee and Calvary? Oh, Jesus, he came as a Messiah and he, because, and he died for our sins on the, on the cross. Oh, I see. Oh, when he got, he received salvation, salvation when he preached the gospel there. Oh, oh, do you have, I want to be baptized. We have, we have water. Can you can you baptize here like then? And after, when he was baptized, God led him to other city again. Because if they stay in one place for a long time, then he may, they, can, they may get caught and go to jail. But as this work of God occurred, God let them meet uh, Ethiopian eunuch in, uh, in his way, on his way, and they went to other places. So he moved from place to place, and you can see how God led him. So here in chapter 17 as well, so here he preached the gospel, that's good. It's not like that. So for in th- for three Sabbaths, they, they preached the gospel, and some Jews accepted it, but later they refused. It's true, when we preach the gospel, there are people who accept us, but there are people who are against us. It always happens. But being unable to preach, preach the gospel, finish the gospel there, they went to other cities, and Paul and Silas they went to they went to many other cities and God let him go to many other places to preach the gospel Athens, Berea and it's in, so the gospel that they preached in Asia was now it now flew away into Europe and the work of the gospel grew in Europe as well so the work of God seems is just being done, but it's not just being done, but God is doing it. So Paul was persecuted in Thessalonica. So he went to Berea. Here the Bible says something very interesting here. Chapter 17, verse 10, it says, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. So whatever they went, the synagogue of the Jews were good. The Jews were gathered there. They'll talk about the Bible and preach the word and share the word. So whenever they go to the the synagogue, whenever people like Paul shows up, if they're not ready to preach the word, they can, they can go like, or oh, if you're not ready to preach the word, I can go. And they would, because when the synagogue, when people they know, people knowing the Bible comes to the synagogue, they will give them a word, give them a flow, so that they would speak in front of them. So they were, there they will talk about Isaiah, where he was persecuted, uh, where it was prophes- prophesied that Jesus was going to come. 
So opening the book of prophecy, then they'll talk about Jesus of Nazareth right away and tell them, oh, he is actually the Messiah. So that's how they witnessed. People were surprised, but they they got they were they received salvation and they got saved. Whenever there is the work of the gospel, the people listen. Then they have to stay there and for, preach the gospel for a while. But the Jews would come and persecute them again, and would tell them, "Oh, you're you're breaking the laws," and they'll persecute and they'll go to other cities again and again. Sir, what does the Bible say? Bible says the people of the Vera, they are more it says that these were more noble than these uh, th than those in Thessalonica in, that they received the word with the all readiness of mind so being noble or not that doesn't really matter so when they preached the gospel to the Jews again, they were persecuted again. So eventually they went to Athens. So right after that, verse 11, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. There for many of them believed also of honorable women which were Greeks and of men, not a few. Amazingly, you know, the Judaism, Juda Judaism is to believe the words of the Old Testament. Judaism was only it is the belief only is it is a faith only limited for the Jews but not only Jews this gospel is for all people so even to the Gentiles this gospel is preached so although they went to the synagogue of the Jews and preached the gospel there but also the Gentiles they got saved this precious work they could see this precious work that was being done. And as the Jews got saved and received salvation, the course, in the beginning, they went to other cities and they would be like, is there, is there a synagogue of the Jews here in this in this city? Oh, at the end of this corner, you can go straight. Oh, then they would go there and they'll preach the gospel to the people who are gathered there. You preach the word on the old on the Old Testament and say and read out read, read out the passage about the uh, birth of the Jesus, you know, in the book of Isaiah, and say uh, the one who Messiah came recently is Jesus, and he died and he died for our sins on, at the cross. Oh, that means our sins are all forgiven, as we gave offerings before for for through the blood of the sheep and goat. Our sins were forgiven. So these were all shadow of Jesus, and the true image is Jesus. So when they preach the gospel like that, they will, they will be like, oh, that's right. So Jesus who died a little while ago, he took care of, he, he took the charge of our sins. That's how they were able to believe. And afterwards, what comes up right after next, right after that is, the Jews would come and persecute them. The Jews would come and persecute them. And they, because they cannot stay in that city any longer, they would move. They move to other city. And when they go to the other city and preach the gospel there, like Macedonia and Berea, they went to other cities, right? Because they were continuing from there. But there, they preached the gospel in the synagogue of the Jews. People, they accepted the word and they got saved. So this continued. And they went to other cities and to, they visited the synagogue of the Jews and preached the word. And when they get saved, they would do persecutions again. So they went to Berea and they went to the synagogue of the Jews again there and preached the gospel. And people got saved and the Greeks got saved and there were some people who were against it. And they went to they went to Athens and they went to Corinthia. So this this they did that in the providence of God. 
So continuously, in every city that they went, God let them get saved as they preached the gospel. When I got discharged from the army base, it was in 1969, I went to Kimcheon, and it was in the spring. It was, uh, we did a Sunday school kids meeting, and we also had a conference. Once we went to Poon Presbyterian Church to have the conference there. It was a church of 120, 30 people. First night when I preached the gospel, there was a big fuss. Because until now, they th they said uh, they believed the they believed the wrong the wrong thing until now. So except for some elders, most of them they got saved. So in Daejeon in Chungnam University in the nurse uh, department, there was dormitory, but the sister was in was in, was an inspector there, principal got saved. So every week I would go there and have Bible studies. The dormitory of the nurse department in Chungnam University. So on my way back, on my way there, I was stopped by Poon. And I preached the gospel to them. But when they got saved, not long later, their spiritual life was dying. When they first got saved, they were so happy. But, I, but as time passes by, their faith uh, was fading. And I wondered why. I realized that because the brothers and sisters were saved, but because the pastor who was in the church, it was not it was not saved. So you talk about the laws. So their heart flew to the laws. In the beginning, I just liked to like like to preach the gospel. So I put this banner. I put this banner reading, uh, Far East, uh, Gospel Association. So every summer, summer vacation, we would have a Sunday school camps and preach the gospel. And in the winter time, I went to other. Uh, I went to other places as a as a speaker for the speaker of the revilers revival. But my but as but in my my daughter was born in 1972. I was so happy. So in 1973, the first birthday of my da daughter Unsu, right, right, the day, right, the day after we, I decided to start a church, so that I will be able, I should lead the brothers and sisters who are saved. I should lead them spiritually, because as they go to other church, they fell, they fall into it, and their salvation became so a blur. So I, that's how I came to Daegu. As I preached the gospel in Daegu, in Padong, I preached the word. The gospel is not only in the original church, but people, uh, people began to receive salvation in other regions and the churches were established. So in 1988, we had Olympic Games in Korea. In 1989, when President Noteo was in power, he gave his speech. And in his speech, back then, no one in Korea, they would let them have a passport because if they travel abroad, they will spend, they will spend dollars. So in the month of March, when I read the, I read from the paper, newspaper that we can have our passport issued, I was, they said only those who are above 49 years old, they can have their passport issued. So I was barely 45 years old then. I barely passed 45 years old then. I was able to have my passport pa issued with my wife. And we applied for American visa in the U.S. Embassy, and they asked us if we were going to go to the United U.S. together. So we said yes, and they gave, and they, they accorded, and in, they gave us the visa, visa. 
and taking the flight. Then we went to we crossed the Pacific Ocean. We went to United States. When I first went to um, United States, there there were many things that I could not understand. Because when we uh, cr when we cross the Pacific Ocean, it is it is LA right there, and it is it is a harbor too. So I thought they were gonna land right there, but they went well, they went northward a little bit, and so in the in, in the in fall in fall went to Berlin, Germany, and pushed the war there. It was 1979, and in 19, 1990, for the first time. We began to send our missionaries to Germany and Germany and U U.S. And as we as we do do that in 1970s and in ni 19 in 1990s, there were 25 churches in our in our mission. So we had about 30 churches throughout Korea. So from then on, I went. I sent missionaries abroad. But what is amazing is. When we see the economic growth of our country, when you had Olympic Games in 1988, Korea was so poor then, no, no one would issue a passport then. So starting from 1989, as we had our passport issued and we began to go abroad, but from then on, the economy of our country grew grew radically. When uh, President Chung Yi Park started his go government, he, his goal was uh, export a GDP of ten billion won, a uh, ten billion dollars, and thousand GNP per capita. Back then, uh, the GNP uh, for each Korea, each Korean was about two hundred dollars. So when people they heard that his aim was to have a thousand dollar GNP per capita, nobody believed him, saying, "Oh, how can you have a cap capita uh, GNP income of thousand dollars? That's impossible." But Sooner we able we able to have a GNP of thousand dollar per ca per capita, so our economy grew ra very radically. And I think recently we surpassed at thirty thirty thousand dollars. This was something that we could never Im imagine. As we started our mission o overseas. The more uh, the, our church, our country grows economically, it was easier for us to do the mission mission work. Even now, people in the world, the people that they want to visit visit the most is South Korea. There are many people who are who admire South Korea, and I think it's because we preach the gospel. And even now, when I like people in Kenya, when you have mind education, and I'll talk to them. Once, from Cote d'Ivoire, about 50 people they came for uh, education program, training program, and we trained them for about three months. And I talked about mind education there, but they could not travel back to their country because of COVID-19. And they stayed there for six months. This one of one one lady was pregnant, and she gave birth to the child here in Korea, and he was so happy. And even with the uh, ambassador of Cote d'Ivoire, we're very close. And he came to see them, and he gave me an envelope. It was there was thousand dollar in the envelope, and I was so thankful. And though there are people, there are people in the, people of Cote d'Ivoire who are there for our training, they got like I think it, I I remember I think it was around three thousand dollar per person. So anyway, I got really close to the ambassador ambassador of Cote d'Ivoire. So the work that we do, so I can see how God is working through us, and we are at the center of His work. I believe. Last year, because of COVID-19, we went through a lot of difficulties. 
and the whole world went through difficulties. But when I, but, but when I saw some photos of Brazil, because people, their father, their mother, they were, they got hospitalized and they were in the hospital. But once they're hospitalized, they could not see their parents anymore, unless they're healed. But if they are not healed, the hospital they did the burial themselves and funeral themselves. So they had to, they were their the parents were just buried underground without they without them being able to see their parents before they are buried. So people they would go out on the street and they would get on their knees and they would pray with their hands up. So I saw so many of them doing that on in their in the picture. So as I preached the gospel, when I shared how we got saved through the blood of Jesus, people of Brazil they were very excited to know that word. So when we share the word in the in the summertime. 276 broadcasting stations around the world they televised our sermons it was 11 sermons of 90 minutes in the in fall it was 655 broadcasting stations when we counted the viewership in the in, in spring it was 1 billion but when we counted the viewership in of fall it was about 2 billion so as we continue to air our sermons, even now many people they are they are seeing our sermons, and so far about eighty billion million people they are hearing our sermons on Sundays. So the works that we are doing in this world is not just being done, but in the center, as the, as the word of God in the center in their life, and is as his servant in the center of the whole world. So Paul went to Thessalonia, Thessalonica, Berea. You know, just like our missionary school, if there are many students, you know, they can, some of them, they can go to Thessalonica, some of them, they can go to, you know, Berea, they can let them stay, some other group can, can go to other city and let them preach the gospel in other place. They could have done that if there are many people, but there was only Paul and Silas who preached the word there, and Barnabas, he went to elsewhere. So even, so even if he does that all his life, how many cities can he visit? So he could not visit many, many cities. So we can see how he preached the gospel. You know, sometimes... When I got saved in 1962, I was I was going through so much difficulties, and I got saved later. We were we were just sharing the word, and as we were we were actually working in the farm, and when we do when you work in the farm, we could barely feed all our family members, because and actually in the village we cannot we cannot get, make much money. Whenever our chickens lay eggs. He will make a. He will sell those eggs and buy matches and soaps. And and to make more money, he had to sell rice. But because we we could barely feed ourselves with the rice that we were harvesting, we had to starve. So when we have breakfast, we'll keep a bowl of rice. So we'll. In that one bowl of rice, we would add some vegetables and we'll make porridge, adding some uh, adding some vegetables. But at least we didn't starve. Once uh, we were having breakfast, we heard some noise outside. And I heard the noise again. Uh, the friend came to ask for some rice. He was so shy, after asking, he kind of he keyed himself. So my father called the friend, and he gave him a spoon, spoon, uh, spoonful of rice from his bowl. That's how our life was back then. So anyway, then 
as we're going through difficulties, we went through difficulties, but we got saved afterwards. If we just did our church, it would have been, it would have been okay, but God, let me start a missionary school. I didn't mean to start missionary school, but as God gave me that heart, Oh, such a person like me, how can I, you know, run a missionary school? I cannot. And I will just forget about it. And God, was, uh, God wouldn't tell me anything in my heart, and I would just stay quiet. But later, God would give me the same heart again. But older brother of my mother-in-law was the Dr. Moon Young Bin. He was the first one who started the Bible Association. He went to, he went to, he went to UK and received the support from uh, the Queen of England, Queen of UK. So that's how he started the, now it's Korean Bible Society, but then they used to call it called Great Britain Bible Society. So he was, he was the uncle of my wife. So when I told him that I wanted to start this missionary school, the uncle of my wife, said, how could you think about all this? How did you imagine doing these kind of things? Let's work together. I thought he was going to tell me, let's work together. But he told me, oh, I'm too old. I don't think I'll, I would be much of help here. But, I'll, but he said he will help me. And he gave me all the books written in the original language to me. I couldn't even read those books. But he gave me, you know, a full, you know, box, like big pile of those books. But as I started missionary school, what I thought about in me, in me was that already then God had this plan for us to start this missionary school and send missionaries abroad. That's why we started the missionary school. And in 1989, in our country, back then we began to establish churches in other regions because as our families got saved. So we would send one of our missionary school students so we had about 30 regional schools. So in big churches, there were about... So about 200 people, they got together in Songo Pinefield. When we were having program in Songo Pinefield, it was very good then. And we started, and the number grew, and very quick, we got 200 people coming for the retreat in Songo Pinefield. And God opened the path for us to do the world mission. From my mother, from the mother's womb already, Apostle Paul said that God chose him. So when I see how God works, there was no one who wanted to start missionary school among us. I just started it. But then already God planned a world mission. And in 1989, I went to the state for the first time. And from, from, from the following year, we began to send our missionaries. In 1990, we sent our missionaries to the United States and also Germany. And starting from 1993, as we had Expo, it was when we were in Daejeon. And we met many Kenyans through the Expo. We met the Minister of Commerce and Industry. And through the invitation of the ministry, Minister of Industry and Commerce, we went to Kenya. And the following year, uh, we sent our we sent our missionary, sent our missionaries, Yun Jong, Pastor Yun Jong Soo, and Kim Jong Duk there, and in God, brother, one brother, or one Ghanaian brother called Siam, he asked me to hold the hold the conference in Ghana. In 1995, I went to Ghana, Accra, and I preached the gospel there, and that's how we began our mission uh, work in Ghana and also Kenya. So having his own plan. We can see you could see how God opened the path for us to preach the gospel. It was so amazing. 
When I see the book of Acts, Paul went to the new city. He preached the gospel in the synagogue of the Jews. Actually, they were they were talking about the Bible. Paul, for when I, when he first went to the synagogue, he was preaching so well. And he talked about how the Christ were to come and how Christ was to be born through the Virgin Mary. It was all good. It was all correct. And after three, after three days resurrected and he was lifted up to heaven and they preached, the God, they preached that gospel. So, the, the, because it was happening just as they... Per, it was prophesied in the, in the Bible. So, when they saw that... As the Christian Christianity was becoming famous, they thought the they thought the Judaism was going to disappear. So their people were against it, and this work continued. As this continued, what happened? There are people preaching preaching the gospel and. And as they continued. No, they went to Rome, right? Rome was the capital of the world then. So from the Rome, the gospel was preached throughout the whole world. And was, it, was, it spread out to Germany, UK, Europe, Russia. It was spread out to all other countries around the world. And then in Europe regions, just come some churches... Even when there was reform of Martin Luther, it was still the region of Martin Luther, but there was not church churches all around the world. But amazingly, the new continent of America was discovered. So back then, this saved church was persecuted a lot. So John Wesley went to preach the gospel in the United States, but he failed, and he got he was diseased, so he came back to UK. One day it was in it was 1980, 1938, right? I remember the number well. Anyway. Anyway, after the salvation, John Wesley, he they started their ministry in the United States. And after the salvation, they started the Methodist Church. Then as they started Methodist Church, there was so much persecution then. John Wesley, he couldn't even stand in front of you know, other churches, but he was known as the minister of outdoor mission. He preached a word to two, three people. That's how they started the Methodist Church, and they were able to do. That's how the, the that's how the Methodist Church began and do the great work. And as they preached the gospel to the United States, many Puritans they went to the states. And they were able to build the United States. And through the United, United States, the missionaries were, were sent to all around the world. And by the time when I when I received salvation, there were, there were about 500 missionaries in Korea alone. And many people, they went to mission, they went to mission work. In 1968, when I got saved, when I went to the when I went to the houses houses of the missionaries of American missionaries, they were living actually in the United States. They had American refrigerator, American you know food, American table, American you know thing, every American car, everything was from the states. But anyway, through our mission, as we preached this gospel of salvation. This work's not or this work was not just being done, but but last year as we 
as many people they went through difficulties because of COVID-19 people they had the sincere love for the word of God and as they preached the gospel many people they got saved and in, in fall in the double or triple more people got saved so last, last year I don't know how well we calculated about 600,000 pastors they got connected to our church and you know, they are doing the work of the gospel together and as we do the work of the gospel in CLF as well the Christian, Christians in, in Korea they are there's they are they're discussing, they are talking about us. The people who are speaking against us without knowing anything about us, they are saying that we don't pray, this and that. But when they actually come to come to see our mission, they can see they can see can see how they are opening their heart toward us. And I think God has committed us this work to preach the gospel. And this morning, Pastor Youngjun Park and Pastor Jongdoli, they got back from Fiji. We got I got this news that they just came back from Fiji and whenever they went in Fiji they preached the word the churches in Fiji they they signed MOU with us so whatever they go they would, they would preach the gospel and there are 1,500 churches in Fiji but as pastors they went to Fiji I don't know in how many churches they did the they did the conference but I think as two of them went, I don't think they had conferences more than 50 countries. But, you know, as God worked amazingly for us, you know, when we go to Fiji from time to time, the whole church got saved. And we will keep sending missionaries there. And all the works that we do right here, because our whole, the Holy Spirit is working with us, it is so amazing to see God working through us. So it's not... So it's not in a personal desire, but purely we're preaching the gospel, and our, as our brothers go there to preach the gospel, and they sacrifice and they sacrifice themselves. And I heard that pastor, Pastor Cho Sung White, called coronavirus. So I told him to come back to Korea. So if possible, I will, I will, will if he comes back to Korea and receive the treatment, that will be better. I thought. And there are many pastors. Uh, many of our pastors they got they caught corona, but they survived they got healed so i'm very grateful about it so this gospel as it is being preached worldwide i'm so thankful and this afternoon i'm gonna have interview with uh, some pastors of uh, taiwan i think they want to work with us that's why they want to do it so when i think about it i'm so thankful to god so anyway the christianity people they consider Christianity as one religion but they don't really come to save people from their sins and people there are many people are bound by the sin problems but as we preach the gospel when we see how they are being freed from their sins we are so thankful and I'm sure that God will be pleased with it when we when he sees us preaching the gospel and with all our hearts we are doing we are preaching the gospel abroad and to the countries where the gospel has not penetrated yet, we we'll send our missionaries there and we we'll do the work of the gospel. But among them, there are some people who go there after the missionary school course. There are people who come back saying, oh, I cannot do this work anymore. There are people who do that time to, from time to time. There are a couple of them who, who do that. But what is really uh, dis what is, what is, uh, disappointing is that people... Uh, they follow their personal thought. Also, there are people who are standing against the church. There are people. But as God let us preach this gospel, we are so grateful about the work that He does for us. Everyone in this era, we have received the special grace of God. This gospel, this, this gospel that justifies us, this is so good. But many, many denominations, they, although they still believe in Jesus, but they say that they're still sinners. There are many people who, like, who are like that. But as we witness this gospel, 
As many people, they get saved. I think this will be amazing. Yesterday, a couple of uh, American missionaries, they came to visit us, and they heard the gospel, and they really appreciate it. They want to work with us now. And he gave me a flag of the United States and also gave me a mug cups. On one side, they put the logo of their mission. And on the other side, they put the logo of CLF. So they brought us the cups too. And, and as we continue to preach the word, I believe that I believe that God will work through this meeting. And I'm so thankful how God will work through this in our life. Satan, he took away our hearts and he wants to attract us so that our heart, may, may our heart would fall into those physical or material things. There are people who are into the charity or things like that. But as we preach the gospel of Christ, this gospel that we preach, when this gospel is preached throughout the world, and as we do this work work online, even if the even if the missionary doesn't go there himself, we preach the gospel online. And with so many people being saved. And as they work as we they, many of them they work with goodness mission and I when I see them and I'm so grateful. Well, the work of the Satan is not light, it's not negligible. But through Christ, we, as we overcome all this, and I'm so thankful that as when I see how we can work in the grace of Jesus, I'm so thankful. Loving brothers and sisters, we're living in this amazing era. In this era, it's not a God. It's not the era without the gospel. This is the era with the gospel. The, the generation that has the gospel, that are, the gospel generation that doesn't have the gospel, they are divided. But as we preach the gospel, as we do this work of the gospel, that this is the precious, this is the will of God, and we pour all our hearts into this. Pastor Jung Do Lee and Young Jun Park. Once they left the church and they, but, but they are they are they are back now. So I'm so grateful. Although they were in our mission, but they didn't really know how our mission was. But this time around, as they came, they're so happy now. And now that now in many places they are asking for people to come. But although because of COVID-19 we are not free to travel, although it seems like Corona is bothering us not to preach the gospel but through corona i he, he can see that more people receive salvation and more broadcasting stations more people they're televising our sermons so i'm so grateful about this why why this happens i think god's providence is working in us now loving brothers and sisters it, we should not just live our lives like this, but we should think about it more deeply as we live for the gospel. There is no one who does not preach the gospel. We shouldn't, none of us should be unable to preach the gospel, but no matter who we mean, as we preach the gospel and as we witness how we are saved, I hope that we learn how to preach the gospel, each and every one of us. And nowadays, because of COVID-19, uh, the, the numbers of the flight has reduced. But in the future, as we as, as you get vaccinated, how you travel abroad? If you are fa if you are your, if you have your families abroad, you go there and preach the word, and stay there for a while, and stay there for a while in your family's house abroad, and preach the gospel there, and tell them this time, not you know Korean, but I, I came with the Israeli gospel to preach it to you. And as you keep on preaching the gospel, because this is the work that God is pleased of, when you do this work, I believe that the hands of God will be with you. I'm so sure of it. Until now, what well, I was nothing, 
I know I was nobody, but I would, by the grace of God, I was able to preach the gospel worldwide. Especially last year, last week, we had interview with uh, we had we had a uh, press conference, and we had interview, and I was so surprised because the first lady of Brazil preached the word, and we got all, we got all this message from many broadcasting uh, broadcasting stations foreign working stations we had a press conference i was so grateful to uh, all those press all those broadcasting stations and through the gospel i can see how god is so how god is pleased with us and as we live our lives we shouldn't we shouldn't just preach the word like we shouldn't just leave try to eat but as we take part in the gospel work and as we pray and these days, every evening, we we get together and we have Bibles, we have Bible studies. And as all these people they come together to preach the word, I'm so grateful to God. And as we preach this gospel, if one, as we taste how people are being saved, if we if we this life, if this life. I believe that our life would be more blessed and more glorious, I believe. Thank you. This work of work of the act from Corinthians to Thessalonica to Berea to Athen, this work of the gospel in the book of Acts. So this time as well as we can, as we write, we are write, recording new uh, book of Acts, and through just as God worked through the book of Acts, God can see how God is working amazingly through our mission. Now, I hope you reduce your life, and I hope you leave for the gospel. And if you give your heart for the gospel, I believe that God will let you do the more precious work. Thank you very much. I will see you next time. As we make as we depict this new book of act in this generation i hope that you take part in this work of the gospel